sorry. Just let me take off my trousers and my clothes before I start my speech. A lot of you are like, what the hell? <laughs> what if I told you that taking off my clothes on a daily basis is triggering for me? What if I forcibly started giving out to you and told you to take your clothes off right now? Kinky. <laughs> but that's not it. Nearly every day I was stripped naked. Left to the side, laughed at. Sexually abused and sexually harassed as though I would hide something in my private parts. But don't worry, I'm not going to intimidate you with my Greek physique today. I'll keep my clothes on. Now, we know that humanity and democracy has no borders. Right? We know that when a state is in need of help, we will rush to help them. We will rush to help those who are being oppressed and those who are in need. And in the summer of 2013, I'd done exactly that. I witnessed people being killed, people being burned alive, people being tortured, people being disappeared for something that we take for granted. Freedom. Democracy. Humanity. Our simple, basic rights. And for that, I was imprisoned. And to put that in today's perspective, I was imprisoned when the iPhone 4S was just launched. And I was released when the iPhone 10 was announced. Jeez, that's a timeline. <laughs> now, I knew that police in oppressive states may be corrupt. But my core belief was always in the judicial system. My trust was that those who ruled on the innocence of a person subject to the evidence provided to them were going to be the ones that were going to break the rule of innocent until proven guilty. And that's what broke my trust. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ibrahim Halawa, and I was imprisoned in 2013 for four years and two months alongside my sisters. And I learned a lot of life lessons in the school of prison. And one, one of them was to always be grateful for the food you have. Never be picky. Hold on to your kebabs and your burritos. Because the first time they had given me food in a bucket was the exact same bucket that they took out the garbage in. It was throw out the garbage, put in the food. And I didn't know what food was in that bucket, but I was not going to eat it. And my journey started to become more difficult. And my first heavy encounter with prison was, bang, bang, bang. Officer, inmate dying. As he continuously sips on his cup of tea, tell me when he's dead. Bang, bang, bang. Officer, inmate is dead. And as they open the door and take him and throw him to the side, threatening us, that if we were to speak about this, that we would be next. But along my lessons that I learned was, I learned how to cook. Trust me, you don't want to taste my cooking, but I learned it. And as I was cooking one day for my cellmates, and it's not as fancy as you think when I say cooking, just to put that out in perspective, something starts to crawl up on the wall. Something decided to dive a 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter dive into a hot tub. A nice cockroach. Ibrahim, how's the food coming along? 
Great. Amazing. Wait till you taste this. And I take it out. Because we couldn't afford to lose the food. Mm, that was delicious. What was that? Oh, thank you, Speedy. I named him Speedy because he added food to the he added flavor to the food so fast. But my biggest shock was that I was facing the death penalty according to their charges for peacefully protesting. And every day I would put my head down thinking that tomorrow might be my final day. That when they come to strip us in the morning and to take out the garbage, I didn't know if it was going to be me taken to be executed or simply it was just going to be the garbage. Now, because Wexford is so deep to my heart, for the first time, I will release exclusive photos. And I know I'm getting you guys excited tonight, but not that type of exclusive photos. <laughs> photos of me in my prison cell. Now, the prison cell, you can see the wall is blue and it's fancy. And I only reached there after a hunger strike. And you might say, well, does it look like you are on a hunger strike, mate? But that's exactly it. The fear that they have embedded in my mind that maybe one day I will have to give up the most essential thing I need to live for the most essential thing that us humans want. I constantly went on a hunger strike for my freedom. I asked them to move me from a cell that looked like this to a cell that was a bit more spacious. I asked them to clean the toilets from something that looked like this to this. The worst transaction was giving up your health and your life for something that was already yours. And yet again, they did not Give me the one thing that I needed the most, and that was my freedom. The first time I really felt like I was imprisoned was the first time I got sick. And I waited for someone from my family to reassure me that everything was going to be all right. For my sisters to come in with a cup of hot lemon and to tell me that everything will be fine. I needed some love. But I slept alone. And I knew that prison was going to be one hell of a ride. And let me tell you a story. One of my cellmates managed to smuggle in a box of blades. Because we needed to shave. And I mean shave. Those forests needed to be gone. And you might be thinking, what the hell was someone bringing a box of blades into prison? But that was essential. But at that stage, I was so sick of being beaten. I was so sick of being tortured. I was so sick of never seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. It just was never appearing. I didn't want to be the hero of my story no more. And I took that blade. And I went behind the wooden door and I closed the wooden door and I still remember the sound of that old wooden door. As I wedged it in. And I put the blade to my wrist and that's it. I am done. I'm going to end my life before they end my life. And thoughts start coming and rushing into my head. What about your parents? What about your mom? She was just diagnosed with cancer. She'll forgive me. She'll understand. What about your dad? He'll forgive me. What about your sisters? They'll cry a little bit and they'll forget me. What about your friends? They'll just remember me every now and then. It's fine. What about God? He created me and he knows best. 
And as I put the blade to my wrist, one last thought comes to my head. What about yourself? The question that we never ask ourselves, the question that we tend to leave to the very end and sometimes neglect at all. When you should be priority. And that's where it started to click to me. That's where I started to understand that those, prison, those officers were nothing but just people. And they may imprison my body, but never my mind. Because my mind was constantly at home. My mind was at the cliffs of Moher. My mind was in Dublin City. My mind was some spare change, please. I just missed all of it. And I remember someone sent me a picture of the beach in Donegal and I put it against the wall and I put a blanket over my head. I was free. I could hear the waves of the beach. I could feel the sand in between my toes. I was not in this prison cell anymore. And sometimes in life, we allow people to occupy our mind. We allow people to constantly occupy our thoughts. You're not good at your job. You don't look good. You're never going to be successful. You're never going to achieve what you want. And you're never, ever, ever going to be happy. And we become so outburned by all of this negative energy. And we just become tired. And we build a wall. And a second wall. And another wall. And a fourth wall. Until our minds are imprisoned. We have imprisoned our own minds because we allowed others to occupy them. Now, I'm no life coach and I'm not going to tell you to forget all what your mind says to you, to forget what all your heart speaks to you about. Keep going. Life is going to be great. Keep going. But rather I tell you to connect with your mind, to connect with your heart, to connect with your soul. And you will feel the ultimate power. You will be free. Now sometimes life around us is dark. And we just don't have energy anymore, especially with all the negative news around us. But we have to be the positive energy. And how do we do that? By connecting to our mind. By connecting to our heart. By connecting to our soul. And if you feel like you need professional help, then seek it because there's no shame in doing so. And as I always say, that without darkness, we wouldn't be able to see the beauty of the moon. Now, I remember I was imprisoned with Peter Greste, an Australian journalist, and he told me, as I was in my journey to discover my mind, he told me, Ibrahim, why don't you try meditation? And this is what I thought straight away. <laughs> I was like, mate, what drugs are you on? You want me to sit down, cross my legs, and be like, hmm, hmm. And he said, just try it. And I tried it for the first time. And I sat down, and I was like, hmm, with all of them. And I looked, opened my eye, and I was like, we have officially lost the plot. <laughs> but I was able to connect with my mind. And sometimes when you're in a route that there's so much cloudiness, that there's so much people interfering with their opinions, you will be in a route that will be full of hardships. You will be in a route that will be full 
of lessons, full of climbing. Sometimes you will doubt your existence and say, why am I here? But let me tell you that the best victories are the ones that against all odds, against all negativity, against all pain, against all tiredness, that you finally were able to break free. And this is why I say that when you achieve something, when you accomplish overcoming something hard in your life, write it down. Today I learned to be more tolerant. Today I learned to be more positive. Today I lived another day. And if you're on that route and you hold on, then you are walking towards your purpose that you have been shaped for in this life. Now, I was imprisoned straight away after my leaving cert. And if you have Middle Eastern parents, let me tell you, the best place to go after your leaving cert results is prison. <laughs> not your grave, because they will dig you up and tell you, why did you not get an A? It's prison. But if had I ended my journey in prison, I wouldn't have made it here today on this platform. I wouldn't have made it to UCD School of Law where I thought, God, these people are fancy. The way they speak. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Can I have some butter on my toast? But I made it to UCD Law. And I made it here today. And that for me was breaking free. We have showers in our toilets. I never thought that I would be able to witness such a thing. But I did. And I'm not going to tell you that it's all going to be great and wonderful and, it, and you're never going to collapse or relapse. Or I'm not going to say that. Because during the pandemic, in isolation, in lockdown, everything triggered back for me. I was right back at square one. I felt like I need to give up. But again, I realized that I was imprisoning my mind. And I said, let me reach out. And I reached out to my school advisor, Nadia Clarkson, and I said, Nadia, I'm so tired. I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. All my school friends that I was with have graduated and they're working full time and I'm still in, going into second year college. But she said to me, walk your journey at your own pace. Don't walk it as others walk it. And I've done so. And I'm going into my final year, a fourth year school of law. I joined the law society as the eldest person there in my school. But I found my family. And I wanted to enjoy it. And this is why I tell you to walk your journey at your own pace. Because when you reach the end, you do not want to regret not taking a break or stopping somewhere and enjoying that beautiful scenery. Had I been imprisoned in my mind, in prison, I wouldn't have been able to reconnect with myself or my heart or my soul. And I wouldn't, been, I wouldn't have been able to connect with God. And understand my purpose in life, that he has chosen me for a purpose. That he had put me in a place to learn all these lessons, to help those on their ongoing trials in life. And people will support you along the way. Like my amazing sisters and family and friends from Wexford, Lorraine. All of those people will give up their life to help you when you're in need. So be grateful, because they gave me my life back. And I was able to finally come home after being acquitted of all charges. <laughs> and I say to you, do not imprison your mind. As my top says in Arabic, 
خلقنا احرارا we were created free so be free thank you very much